I'll wait for you to, are you guys ready? Okay. 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 Please rise and face the American flag as the band performs the national anthem. Graduates, you may keep your caps on. Good evening. My name is Abby Lee, and I'm the Student Council Executive President. It is my pleasure to welcome you and all the other guests, both in person and on the live stream, to the class of 2022's commencement ceremony. On the behalf of my class, I would like to thank the many people that have made tonight's ceremony possible. Please hold your applause until the end. Thank you to the senior band members under the direction of Mr. Don Pettit and Mr. Kelso Danning for playing the national anthem for us. Thank you to the orchestra under the direction of Mrs. Michelle Brooks and Mrs. Carol Letcher for the beautiful music recordings that will be played throughout this evening. Thank you to our school's administrators, head principal, Mr. Ronald Schreiner, associate principal, Mr. Daniel Walbaum, Assistant Principal, Mr. Eric Ulrich, Assistant Principal and Special Education Director, Mrs. Shelby Johnson, Assistant Principal and Athletic Director, Mr. Joel Strode, and the Counseling Department, Mrs. Libby Sheffield, Mrs. Elise Gruss, Mrs. Candace Dobson, and Mrs. Mary Russell. Thank you also to our West Lafayette School Corporation Board of Trustees. Superintendent Dr. Greiner, President Ms. Rachel Witt, Vice President Mr. Bradley Marley, Secretary Mr. Thomas Schott, and the members, Mrs. Amy Austin, Mr. Alan Karpik, Dr. Karen Springer, and Dr. Yu Yin. I'd also like to say a huge thank you to the incredible people that we graduates encounter every day all the staff and faculty of West Lafayette School Corporation. And finally, thank you to everyone in the crowd tonight. Alumni, friends, parents, siblings, and extended family for gathering here to celebrate the achievements of our class. Your support means everything to us.
And now, on the behalf of just myself, I would like to take the next few minutes to personally thank my fellow classmates for the time we spent together. But before we can get into it, I need to give a bit of context for what I'm about to share. So since middle school, I've done this thing where I write handwritten letters to my friends and family to read someday in the future. Cute, I know. Like how people bury time capsules to open in the future, I keep all these letters in a secret hiding place until I plan to give them out years later from now. Today, I have with me the letter I'd written for you. A letter I've just written in the last two weeks, but that's meant for you to read in the future. Except unlike my other letters, I've decided not to wait to give you this one. Well, yes, ideally I would like to actually mail this to you in a decade or so down the line. The truth is that it'll be near impossible to track you all down by then. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to read aloud the letter addressed to you and the future right now. And then one day, when you're middle-aged and bored, you can just watch this recording again. So here we go. Dear class of 2022, someday in the future, I hope life's treated you well since we last heard from each other. I hope that after we threw our caps at graduation, had a blast at our friend's grad parties, and then finally parted ways after spending the last few years together, the world truly became your oyster. Whether you went to college, the military, trade school, a gap year, your first job, or something completely different right after high school, I hope that it eventually led you to thriving in your best life, working up the ranks in your dream career, conquering that bucket list as you travel the world, and spending quality time with good friends that always have your back. But of course, there's also the chance that things actually aren't going so hot for you right now. Maybe those elaborate, foolproof plans you made after high school to get this degree, to move to this city, to have this family, all kind of fell apart after X, Y, and Z happened. And now you're feeling more lost with your life than you did when you filled out the Common App at 17 years old. And so maybe these next few words won't be much comfort to you, considering they're coming from the voice of a person from the past. But I'm going to say them anyway. You're going to be okay. And you're thinking, how does she know I'm going to be okay? And the answer is, it's because I saw in high school how much potential you had for life. Seriously. Because I remember thinking, when I saw you perform at that orchestra concert or the Wizard of Oz musical our senior year, I thought you were so talented that you could even pursue a career in music if you wanted to. Or I never told you this, but I used to admire you for how you would always contribute something so insightful to those Socratic seminars we used to do in English class. Like some of the things you said in those classes actually helped me think more deeply about the society we live in. Or I remember that the few times I went to sports events, like the track meets I watched you run, or the homecoming football games I watched you win, or the volleyball games I cheered you on at, each time I was completely blown away. Yeah, partly due to the fact that I am the opposite of athletic, and literally anyone that can catch a ball or run fast is very cool to me. But also because I was so inspired by how your teammates obviously looked up to you as a leader, both on and off the field. And as a final example, a particularly unforgettable moment for me was when I marched at the school strike for climate that you and your friends organized all by yourselves. That alone was so impressive. But then you gave that speech at the strike, and I was so amazed that one of my peers could speak in such an eloquent way. So anyway, here I am back in the year of 2022, just 18 years young, with every reason to be completely optimistic about my future, and yet I already know that life isn't going to be perfect. We're all going to screw up a little bit. And that's okay, because I want you to know that your mistakes will never define who you are. 
your creativity, your sense of humor, your kindness, your inspiring talent, your drive, your ability to empathize, your courage, your humility, your sense of leadership. Those special things about you that have always been there since even before high school. That's the stuff that really matters. That's what resonated with me back in 2022. And that's what will stick with me through the future. And I think that perhaps that's true for all of us, that the time we spent together as the class of 2022 from West Lafayette Junior Senior High School was special and will stay with us for the rest of our lives. So truly, it was an honor and privilege to be your fellow classmate in high school. Thank you for everything and good luck for what's to come. Most sincerely, your Student Council Executive President, Abby. Thank you. Okay, so I know you're probably sick of hearing me by now, but I have one last thing to say. I'm so excited to introduce you to the next speaker of the evening. I've had the greatest time working with him in Student Council these last three years, and can tell you that he's just overall an awesome guy. And it's not just me that thinks this. Everyone thinks he's so cool that we even debated putting his face on a class t-shirt earlier this year. So give it up for Shannon Tan. Um, hi, everyone. So first off, I'd like to start by thanking Abby for the introduction. She definitely made me sound much cooler than I actually am. Um, hold on, let me just take my mask off. Oh, there go my glasses. But I'm going to let that slide. Um, but really, it has been a pleasure and privilege to serve as your class president for the last three years. And while I didn't have it in my career plans to become a motivational speaker, life does have a knack for putting you in places that you least expect. So to start out with, I'd like to remind you yet again that you are graduating. Woo. So I don't know if it's hit you yet, but in about an hour, you're going to be walking out of this field uh, with your fancy piece of paper in your hand, probably celebrating. And you're going to realize that, man, I don't have to deal with high school ever again. But before you completely erase any and all memories of your last four years of public education, I'd like for you to look back with me on the experience that we've had in this school. And for that, I have three words. Struggle, struggle and struggle, no. Um, struggle, support, and success. So back when I was in eighth grade, my mom asked me if I wanted to transfer to Westside. I was not thrilled at the idea, uh, and that was because of one reason in particular. I heard that Westside was a very difficult school. And going to Westside, it's no different. Uh, I can attest that a lot of people sitting here uh, probably support the idea that certain classes can only be described as a struggle. And to add on to that, we've had to deal with three years of a global pandemic. So when people say that high school is the best time of your life, when you're sitting in those seats, you're nodding off to sleep while trying to pay attention to some lecture about who knows what. Like, what? So everyone sitting in these seats fought to get to where they are today. And for that, I have unbounded respect and pride for all of you. But I also know that for each and every one of us, we needed support at one time or another in our high school experience. And whether it was from our family, our friends, or maybe even a significant other, if you were lucky enough. Uh, we could really only come out of it stronger from our struggles because of those that helped us. And for that, if my advice is worth anything, I strongly recommend to you, don't forget about the people that care about you. Whether it's your mom, your dad, your best friend, your teachers, or even just the person that drove you to practice every day, cherish them because it was, only, it was only because of their support that you could perform at your best. And speaking of performing at your best, the last word that I thought of when thinking of our high school experience was success. And I think it's safe to say that our class is one of the most successful in the school's history. 
uh, despite what I might see in the lunchroom every other day. So we've put up some impressive accomplishments. I'll only list a few because we'll be here until the sun sets if I go over all of them. But in athletics, so please hold your applause until the end, boys soccer made finals for the first time in school history. Girls golf won sectionals for the first time in 21 years. Uh, boys tennis ranked fourth in the state with one of our seniors actually going on to win the entire single state championship. We had a state runner-up dance team in two events. We had a state runner-up in boys wrestling. Girls volleyball had the most su successful season in over four decades. We had state level cross country for both girls and boys. And there are so many teams that either won Hoosier Conference or sectional championships that got, I, I got too lazy to look for all of them. Um, in academics, we had an academic Super Bowl team that placed top 10 in the state. We had a state champion in Lincoln Douglas debate uh, with several other teams qualifying for nationals. We had three students with perfect SAT scores. And I believe nine students are going to top 10 universities that include Stanford, Northwestern, Berkeley, Duke, and MIT. And again, I got lazy looking for stuff. Uh, in arts, our concert band, our wind ensemble, made state finals. We had several students whose pieces were featured in visual art exhibitions at Purdue. And we have probably had more scholastic art and writing keys than even the amount on Mr. Schreiner's waist, which actually, now that I think about it, probably not. Uh, in extracurricular activities, WLDM raised over 20 grand for charity. And so looking back over everything that we've done as a class, led, yeah, we did a few things. So looking back over the achievements, it almost feels surreal that everything is coming to a close. Feels like every year there's always been the opportunity to get better in the off season, to practice your instrument, to study even harder, and to go at it again the next year. We always say RDP, but it's taken me until now to realize the magnitude of how talented and how smart, how artistic, how musical our classmates are, and that I can really take pride in knowing that I attended and graduated from this school with all of you fools. But as I drone on and on and everyone gradually loses attention because of my lackluster public speaking skills, I want to give all of you one last piece of advice. If some random stranger walked up to you on the street and asked you, what is your story? What are you gonna say? Probably something along the lines of, who are you and why are you asking me this? But to be honest, it's a pretty good introspective question. Where does your story begin? Who's in it? What's in it? And for all of us graduates here today, we're about to finish one of the most important periods in our lives. But for all of us here today, our stories do not end here. Once you walk out of this field with your fancy piece of paper in your hand, you're gonna be opening up a new chapter in your life. So go out there, do your thing, write your story, and when some random stranger comes up to you on the street and asks you, what's your story? I hope you talk long enough that they regret asking you in the first place. But I also hope you mention a small high school in a college town in Indiana. And so thanks for all the laughs and all the memories and as always, RDP. But wait, there's more. So now I'd like to welcome one of the most artistic and talented people in the class, our exec board, Vice President Jennifer Yu, who will also give our Latin honors recognition. Hi guys, um, thank you Shannon. My name is Jennifer Yu, but I'm actually the executive secretary of student council. Just putting that out there. Yeah, Shannon. Um, <laughs> so before I discuss the Latin honor system and recognize those who have achieved them, I wanted to share a few words since you guys have to sit in these seats and listen to me anyways. Over the past four years, high school has taught me many things. I've learned that the first door that you try to open at the athletic entrance is always locked. It's always the second door that you try that's actually unlocked. 
I've learned that none of the digital clocks in the school show the same time. One clock will say it's 8.17 and I'm actually on time to school, but then I walk down the hallway and it's actually 8.22. It just doesn't make sense. But the most important thing that high school has taught me is to have confidence. My favorite childhood character, Winnie the Pooh, once said, you're braver than you believe and stronger than you seem and smarter than you think. Confidence plays a huge role in your success. Confidence in your abilities, confidence in yourself, and confidence to try again when you fail. It's okay to not know what you want to do with your life. And it's okay if you don't have a plan for your future. But you need to have the confidence to put yourself out there. Yes, you will feel uncomfortable at times, and yes, you will feel vulnerable. But if you don't open yourself up and take those risks, you'll never step out of your comfort zone and grow. Of course, along the way, you'll, fa you'll fail, <laughs> but, you'll, but don't dwell on your regrets and mistakes because everyone fails at some point. Instead, take the opportunity to learn and grow from them. So what I also want to tell you is this. Be bold, be courageous, and be yourself. Well, be your best. <laughs> because you are the only one who can be the best version of yourself and you owe it to yourself to chase your success. Of course, when you do succeed, make sure to celebrate. It doesn't matter how small of an achievement it is, whether it's winning a game in your sport, getting to class on time, or making a new friend. I mean, even being here and graduating is a huge accomplishment. Make sure you take the time to acknowledge your achievements and be proud of yourself. With that in mind, I think it's time for us to recognize the people who have achieved academic success through our Latin honor system. West Lafayette's high school's honors, or <laughs> sorry, West Lafayette High School's Latin honor recognition is split into three categories, each signifying varying levels of high academic achievement. The blue cord signifies cum laude, meaning with honor. This recognizes the students graduating with GPAs in the top 30% of their class. Those wearing only the blue cord in commemoration of this achievement, please stand. Uh, magma cum laude, meaning with great honor, recognizes the students graduating with GPAs in the top 20% of their class. Those wearing only blue and silver cords in commemoration of this achievement, please stand. And finally, summa cum laude, meaning with highest honors, recognizes the students graduating with GPAs in the top 10% of their class. Those wearing blue, silver, and gold cords in commemoration of this achievement, please stand. Thank you all for listening. And now I'd like to welcome my good friend, Colson Hussein, who will be honoring the West Lafayette School Education Scholars. Thank you, Jennifer. Hi everyone, my name is Golsum Hussain and I am the Senior Class Vice President. We will now recognize the West Lafayette School's Education Foundation Scholars. But before we do, I'd like to acknowledge how courageous and resilient we have all become. For me, these past few weeks have been truly bittersweet. I've been so excited to graduate high school and leave, but at the same time, I'm terrified of change, and I'm sure that many of you are feeling the same way. This next chapter of our lives might feel intimidating, but I know that we will be facing it well prepared because of our experiences here with one another. Through its ups and downs, Westside has taught me many valuable skills and life lessons. More importantly, I've been able to understand the societal issues that we face, and learn how to create change. Here at Westside, we are taught that academic success is extremely important. 
but I've seen that our class truly understands that there is more to our world than just our test scores and our GPA. Throughout the years, we've brought awareness to social issues in our school and community to create a better environment. Our classmates have led numerous successful climate strikes, brought more awareness to mental health, walked out to stand against school shootings, and raised tens of thousands of dollars for Riley Children's Hospital. We have used our voices in the past to bring awareness and encourage change, and I hope that we will continue to do so in our futures. I am very proud and inspired by the resilience and advocacy that our class has displayed, and I encourage all of us to continue to advocate for what we believe in and what is important to us, to continue to bring each other up and support and celebrate one another. The age-old saying, knowledge is power, rings true. We learn that academics are important, and let's continue to carry our academic success, whatever it may look like to you, and keep creating impactful change in our futures. With that being said, I'd like to honor the West Lafayette School's Education Foundation Scholars. Each one of these students has been thoughtfully selected for awards given by our Education Foundation. They have been chosen for achievements in athletics, academics, and their outstanding leadership in our community. And more about these scholars are found in the commencement program. Now, would those who have received a WLSEF scholarship please stand to be recognized. Congratulations to you all. And now I would like to invite my good friend Abby back up to the stage to introduce our faculty speaker. I have the tremendous honor of introducing our faculty speaker for the evening. He is a math teacher at Westside, one that has actually been posed with the unique opportunity, or doom, however you want to view it, to teach our class twice. The first time when we were eighth graders for eighth grade math, and the second time when we were juniors or seniors in pre-calculus. In addition, outside of the classroom, He's been a favorite cross-country coach by many of the athletes in our class. But if he wasn't too busy showing us how to run faster or derive de Mavre's theorem, I, for one, think that this teacher would have a fantastic career as a touring motivational speaker for students. I am so grateful that I got to spend every day of my senior year in his classroom, because in each of those 48 minutes, I not only got to hear my daily dose of The Simpsons trivia, but also be encouraged about life. I mean, it was amazing. And I never thought I would say this, ever. But I actually walked out of math class every day this year feeling happier. And I know that a lot of the other seniors from our class have felt the same way. That because of this teacher, we've realized that we matter more than the grade we get in math or the time we get at our race. That because of this teacher, we felt valued and respected simply because we're human beings. So now, without further ado, please give a warm round of applause for Mr. Jonathan Polk. Thank you, Abby, for those beautiful words. And I thank you, the class of 2022, for inviting me to be here tonight. I believe that one of the greatest human needs is the feeling of being loved and accepted and to be included with something that's bigger than you. All of us just want to belong to something. The fact that you would invite me, your math teacher, here to speak to you tonight is incredibly humbling. You've all sat through my lessons and you know that I could easily ramble on for 30 minutes about the unit circle, yet you still took a chance by inviting me here today. 
It means the world to me that you want me to be here, so I thank you. These last two and a half years have been incredibly difficult for myself and all of your teachers, guidance counselors, administrators, trying to navigate in a world during a global pandemic. When I signed up to be a teacher, I never considered the possibility that I would have to teach in a year where I might not even get to see my students' faces. The math department in particular took a big hit this year as four teaches, teachers decided to pursue other opportunities away from this building. And if I'm being honest with you, there were days when I thought that number might increase to five. But then you showed up. Class of 2022, thank you for showing up. Sophia and Caitlin, Ava, Landon, Silas, Neil, Cameron, Sarah, Kylie, Ali, Zingyan, Jamie, Katie, Tori, Kendra, Anya, Mia, Matilda, Jackson, two Jacksons, we'll just refer to you as Jackson Squared if that's all right. Andrew, Brendan, Zane, Ellie, Ainsley, Zed, and even Druvo. Oh wait, we don't talk about Druvo. I love you, Drew, but I'm glad you're here tonight. But thank you, class of 2022. You showed up and you renewed my soul. There's an Andrew Peterson song that expresses how you made me feel this year. It's called Day by Day. And part of it reads like this. So don't lose heart, though your body is wasting away. Your soul is not. It's being remade. Day by day by day. Day by day. So thank you, class of 2022, for renewing my soul one day at a time. It started simply with, how was your weekend, Mr. Polk? Then we progressed to the question of the day. You showed incredible interest in my children and my family. Whether it was pausing a moment with your friends after the musical to say hi to them, inviting Addie to come watch the dance team during halftime, sitting with them after school to color and play games, making us lemon bars, writing thank you notes with heartfelt messages, or celebrating Murray's sixth birthday with Minecraft and Legos. I don't have the words to express how grateful I am to you for all that you've given me and my family. But before we go any further, I want to share that my initial plans for this talk were a little bit different. I had some jokes lined up, some new log puns to debut, I wanted to say some funny math words, like cosine, or keystrokes, or hyperbolas. I was going to convince everyone to go see the struts on summer tour, or start a debate about why Mr. Schaefer should show Back to the Future and film Lit. But on Tuesday, while we were celebrating our last day of school, another school in Texas was suffering an unspeakable tragedy. I woke up Wednesday feeling a little broken inside and knew that that sort of speech didn't quite feel right. These past few days, I couldn't help but ask, what if this tragedy had happened here? What if that list of beautiful names that I just read to you were on a different list instead? And I was overcome with sadness. And I know tonight's supposed to be a celebration, and I don't want to take away from that. But it's important to recognize that we all arrive broken in various ways. Maybe the lost lives in Texas are not on your mind this evening, but we all have something. Perhaps while everyone else is being recognized with scholarships and awards, you feel like you don't measure up to what your parents wanted you to be, or your own expectation for yourselves. Maybe you lost a loved one this year that you hoped and prayed would make it to graduation day. Or maybe someone close to you is dying of cancer. Maybe you're sitting in your seat terrified about what the future holds. I could go on, but the truth is this. We do live in a broken world with broken people. But there is good news. There is hope. In the movie The Shawshank Redemption, a movie I know Mr. Schaefer surely discusses, Andy Dufresne shares this word about hope with his friend, Red. He says, hope is a good thing. Maybe it's the best of things, and no good thing ever dies. So what will bring us hope? What will bring us healing to a broken world? 
I choose to believe in a creator who loves us, and I choose to believe that he is most satisfied when we love one another. Loving others is a simple task. It requires no degree, and there are no qualifications to begin. But that doesn't mean that it's easy. It requires patience and self-control. It requires listening and putting others first. It requires grace and sacrifice. Well, that's our, to, our lesson for today. <laughs> oh, wait, I guess I'm your math teacher, so like any good lesson, I need to end it with some examples, right? So take out your pencils, take some notes, and don't worry, for those of you that, that can't keep up, I'll post the notes on Canvas later today. <laughs> and just to assure you, I need to hear this lesson just as much as you do. Um, I'm, not here, I'm not quite there yet, and I have work to do in my heart. Bob Goff says in his book, Love Does, that we're all rough drafts of the people that we're still becoming. So let's work on the next draft of ourselves together, shall we? Example one. One way of loving others is to show gratitude. Each one of you has a support system of parents, teachers, and coaches who love you and believe in you. Perhaps they're sitting here tonight. Maybe they're watching online, or maybe they've even passed on from this world. While you may believe that tonight's celebration is all about you, let me remind you that this is a landmark day for all of those who love you and have supported you. Think about that time your dad woke you up at 5 a.m. on a Saturday to get you to school on time for an away meet. Think about that time your grandparents drove across the state to watch you in the musical. Or that time your mom washed your uniform late at night because you had forgotten. Don't forget about the made lunches, the late night conversations, the rides to and from school, and all that time waiting in the school pickup line. <laughs> That's a long line. I've looked out the window. <laughs> and I can assure you that no parent in, the history, in history has ever thought, I'm so glad that I had children so I can watch a five-hour track meet in the sleet and rain just to watch them run for 30 seconds. <laughs> so with that, I'd like to offer you a moment of quiet reflection for you to think about those who have helped you become who you are today. And once this evening is over, I'd like to challenge you to take a moment, another moment to personally thank them. Thank that person who you were thinking about just now and tell them how much you're, that, you're, their encouragement means to you. And I will go first just to show you how easy it is. <laughs> My mom and dad drove four hours just to listen to me speak tonight and to be here to celebrate with us. Thank you, mom and dad. Thank you for everything that you've given me, your love and support, and I love you both. To my wife, Melissa, being the spouse of a teacher and a coach can't be easy. You play an equal role in what I do here, and you've always encouraged me in ways that I cannot describe. So thank you for always being by my side and loving me despite my faults. I love you. Example two, <laughs> we can love others just simply by encouraging them. Close your eyes for a moment and try to remember last time someone complimented you. How did that make you feel? Amazing, right? Did it make you feel like you were loved? For 13 years at this school, that person for me was Mrs. Porterfield. She always has a way of making you feel like you're the best person on this planet. I know some of you have experienced this with her in the classroom. Every day, she led me to believe that I was the funniest, best dressed, and most amazing teacher ever. <laughs> she would have just the right words to get me through a difficult day. She has the amazing gift of loving others in this way. Whoever that person is for you, never forget that feeling and live to be that person for others. Yes, it takes a little effort, but it's so simple. Here, let me show you. Jackson Deutsch, thank you for being actively engaged in class each morning, even though you had math first period. <laughs> your enthusiasm was much appreciated. I enjoyed watching you do your thing in class, on the football field, and on the stage. You bring it, you bring it every day. <laughs> Let 
Zane Shalabi, you could teach a class on how to be a virtual student. Shout out to my, my e-learners, AKA the homies, I appreciate you. Zane, you're so organized, your commitment to excellence is contagious. Thank you for making e-learning tolerable. <laughs> Rachel Williams, you have an amazing smile. I remember when you moved here in grade school and you would ride along with your mom to pick up your brother and sister from practice. You were never in my class, but that didn't stop you from smiling and waving and saying hello every time I passed you in the hallway. Thank you for that. And the same could be said about Lucas Carpenter. Maybe not quite as good of a smile. <laughs> but it's been four years since you've been in my class, but you gave me a friendly hello on the way to study hall each day. Sometimes a small gesture goes a long way. Thank you both. To Sophia, Ava, Caitlin, Landon, and Silas, you did a great job of getting the entire class together for discussions. COVID-19 seems to have caused everyone to forget how to talk to each other. <laughs> you turned a math class into a loving community and gave me something to look forward to each day. Thank you for that. In our third example, we can love others with service. Serving others is using your time, resources, and talents for the benefit of others. When we serve, we look outside ourselves, beyond our own problems, and seek to bring value to others. Many of you know me as a track and cross country coach, so let me share two stories. Xiao Fei, I wanna thank you for giving back to your school. I watched you give selflessly your free time as a high school student, encouraging and mentoring the middle schoolers on the track team. Lenny Witt, I didn't see this firsthand, but I know you did the same, giving your free time working with the younger band students. Thank you both for giving back to your school. And I had the privilege of coaching Allie Steffi as an eighth grader. She was the fastest runner in the area and broke all of our school records. As we prepared for the end of the season, the state meet was looming, and it was her chance to put her talents on display for everyone to see. I'm sure her emotions were all over the place that week. You know what she did the night before? She wrote handwritten letters for all of her teammates, letting them know that she valued them, she gave them encouragement, and wished them well for their last race of the season. Thank you, Allie, for that amazing example of service. You see, when we love others, not only do we experience the satisfaction of helping someone else, but we also experience the freedom that comes with the act of service. When we focus on the needs of others, only then can we set aside our own feelings of self-doubt or of not being good enough. It's a win-win. There's no downside to loving others. You can even start today. Loved endlessly and relentlessly. Love the unlovable. Bob Goff continues in his book, in the end, love isn't something that we just keep planning to do or continue putting off. Simply put, love does. I'll end with one last thought. Anybody up for a field trip? I see the buses are over there. Unfortunately, all the bus drivers went home for the summer. Brandon, you can, you can drive a bus, right? Maybe. Well, if you ever find yourself walking down 4th Street in Louisville, Kentucky, you may come across a plaque or a sign that talks about a revelation that Thomas Merton had while walking amongst a crowd in that exact spot in the spring of 1958. Merton was an American monk, theologian, and poet and on his walk, he was suddenly overwhelmed with the realization that he loved all of the people around him. The sign says, Merton looked around and all the people passing by were shining like the sun and beautiful. And the wonder of it caught him by surprise. He said, I want to see the world with those eyes, to see each person walking around shining like the sun. So class of 2022, Thank you for renewing my soul one day at a time. 
Thank you for sharing your love with others. May you continue to heal a broken world by shining your light for all to see. May you see the world as Thomas Merton did, to view each person shining like the sun and beautiful. That's my prayer for you tonight. Thank you, and I love you all. As we begin the presentation of diplomas this evening, you may notice that there are some graduates who will not be walking across the stage. We will still read the name of every graduate to honor all of the members of the class of 2022. Baraka Abdubari. Zachary Dean Abrahamson. Steve Edward Abston III. Corey William Adams. Anne Alexinko, Trace Thomas Allenda, Irene Renu Bunia, Kalsam Hussein, Shannon Tan. Abigail Hedgen Lee. Lily Shen. Jennifer Lee Yu. Sophia Elizabeth Algy. Kendra Anag. Masha Baidachna. Sarah Christine Bailey. <coughs> Henry Cassis Balagtis. Jamie Barker. Connor Barquette. Brandon Kadem Uhane Pono B. <laughs> Daniel Bennis Magana. Catherine Ann Benhart. Matilda Lily Berry. Ethan Bledsoe.
Jayla, Anise, Brown. Nathaniel, Curtis, Brown. Emma, Brooke. Mia, Rose, Burgett. Jaden, Bird. Rachel, Kai. Sydney, Ryan, Carnahan. Lucas, Hilt, Carpenter. <laughs> Ellie, Chandler. Calvin Chang. Young Jay Cho. Khalil Lavar Christopher. Crystal Faye Kuvion. Quinton Custer. Priyanshu Data Roy. John Glenn Davis. Rebecca Mariah Davis. Luke Davison DeLion Phoebe's Dang Neil Desai Jackson Butler Deutsch Kendall DeVault Dax Russell Domkowski John Thomas Downey Dash J Driggs Brendan Michael Duffy Ryan Dukes Divya Tarika Durai Ethan J. Ernst Julia Rose Angers Sarah Caroline Sarah Caroline Fletcher Timmons Robert James Flieger Andrew Patrick Folkers. Charisma K. Francis. Andrew Dean Fredette. Matthew Wayne Gardner.
Nicholas Giltmeyer. Sia Goel. Jonathan David Gonzalez. Leanne Melody Gray. Taylor Morgan Green. Alex Grenage. Jackson Gustus. Zane Hafiz. Abigail Elise Hartman. Sophia Hendrick. Paige M. Heron Johnson. Cece Holler. Kaya Grace Hood. Shams Hoke. Alexander David Howells. Rebecca Mackenzie Hubs. Carter Houston. Hannah Idrisi Alami. Carl Oscar Yagosield. Daniel T. Jenkins. Palmer Jordan. Hasung Jun. Ella Monet Justice Coulter. Matthew Kane. Pahal Capitel. Thomas Capic. Cy Karthik. Reagan Catherine Castens. Isabel A. Kuiper. Peter Kim. Silas Ambrose King. Zane King. Cameron Joshua Kirby. Lauren Elizabeth Kish. Chloe Kozer. Sean Michael Krakauer. William Kwan. William LeCount. Zachary David Lassiter. Joyce Lau. Zhang Yin Li.
Nicholas Levick. Ian Leuvens S. Leessa. Allison Lee. Jonathan Lamas Alvarez. Dominic D. Loudermill Jr. Ainsley Lukasik. Kate Adele Malone. Adrian Mao. William Mao. Katya D. Marquez Candelaria. Cole Masson. Braden T. McClellan. Kyler Andrew Meister. Cannon Charles Melkai. Lauren Messicar. Rachel Marie Meyer. Sierra Grace Morgan. Caitlin Mumford. Robert Coleman Naj. Yejin O. Claire B. Olhout. Timothy M. Olhout. Mareri Wilson Amonade. Andrew R. Oxender. Austin Levi Pacheco. Emily Claire Paula. Colleen Pedley. Ava Renee Perrin. James Peterson. Emily Corinne Payton. Caden Andrew Pfeiffer. Julia Margaret Piggott. Nora Elizabeth Piggott. Herschel Paul. Annabelle Procopy. Margaret Procopy. Jacob Reddy. Emma K. Reed. Kylie Ryan Reif. David Ravenko. Robert Scott Richards. Hallie Ricks. Stephen Bryce Ryder. K. 
Caleb, John, Lutz, Richie. Zoe, Ruth. Krisha, Saha. George, Boris, Saxena. Catherine, Margaret, Schertz. Elizabeth R. Schlittenhofer. Eric Schroeder. Stuart Schwarzel. Jonathan Jamal Scott. Zane Shalaby. Zed Shamo. Frank Yang Shi. Druvo Sinha. Jonathan Siskind. Aaron Slamovich. Asa Snowberger. Mario Stefanov. Allison Steffi. Ruth Sugiarto. Andy G. Sung. Landon Teal. Edward Toms. Catherine Eileen Towers Jones. Gabrielle River Trent. Aaron J. Turley. Xiaofei Turo. Eddie Diong Udo Ime. Anjali J. Vanamala. Conlon Grant Van Hook. Studi Varma. Ho Jen Wang, Vincent Wang, Emma Wida, Gabriella Weiner, Declan Timothy Whalen. Sarah Marie Wilcoxon. Aiden Marston William. Maya Williams. Eleanor Grace Witt. Micah Randall Wood. Tori Woods. Braden Reed.
Reina Wu. Kevin Xiong. Jamie L. Shu. Isaac Yakimiki. Jennifer Lillian Yang. Petrod Zhang. Hi, everyone. Hi. <laughs> Is anybody else's hands numb? Because they should really put pockets on these things. Like, Jesus. OK, hi, guys. My name is Lily. I'm the Student Council Executive Vice President. I'm sorry. I know we're all freezing, but I wrote this, so I'm going to say it. So. <laughs> As we near the end of the ceremony and the end of all of our high school experiences, I want to give a quick shout out to an underrepresented group. Can everyone who was virtual for at least part of last school year raise their hand? Yeah, those are the homies. OK, so everything I'm about to say will hopefully be somewhat relatable to the people raising their hands. Everyone else, I'm sorry, you might not understand any of this, but just sit tight. I promise there is a moral to this story. On paper, online school seems like a sweet deal. Your sorry, tassel. <laughs> Your time spent on schoolwork is reduced to like one fifth of what it would be in person. And for the rest of the day, you can do whatever you want. It was like Ferris Bueller's day off, but every day. While most of you were staring at the lava lamp in Pete Vaughn's classroom, I was going on hikes, getting coffee, watching Avatar The Last Airbender, and most importantly, I didn't have to use a school toilet for an entire year. But that's the thing about Ferris Bueller's Day Off. It's one day. I think even Ferris would haul himself back to school after like day 58. Because after a while of having nothing to do, it's easy for your newfound freedom to get the best of you. I didn't quite go nocturnal like Jonathan Siskin did. I swear that man literally did not see the sun for like four months. But like everyone else, except apparently for Zane Schlobby, but she's superhuman, I lost my focus academically. Like once, instead of studying for the Blaisdell quiz I had in an hour that I had not watched any of the lectures for, I literally calculated and I was like, even if I put these on three times speed, it's not gonna work out. I went to the gym because I, at that point, I figured if I'm not going to do well in school, I might as well get swole. So yeah, virtual school may not have taught me about the Taylor series or how to balance chemical reactions, but it did teach me two important things. Firstly, it taught me that animated confetti and a really cute drawing of a panda can genuinely boost my endorphin levels by like 80%. For the parents back there that did not understand that, basically we have to turn our things in on an app called Canvas, and when you turn an assignment in, it rains confetti on your screen. It's like the virtual equivalent of a You Voted sticker. But the second thing that virtual school taught me is that I actually really like you guys. When you're forced to spend eight hours a day in the same building with the same people, it's easy to take them for granted. But when your most prominent social interaction of the day is a muted Google Meet with everyone's camera turned off and Mr. Ambrose trying to figure out how a computer mic works, you start missing your community. I missed class friends, or those classes where everybody becomes friends. I miss saying hi in the hallways. I miss getting compliments on my outfits. And I miss saying thank you to the lunch ladies. I even miss the school restrooms because the stall walls are always filled with silly little surprises. The point is, community is a special thing. 
And whether you brought soap for the slip and slide on senior field day, or bought a tote bag from Generation to Generation's Alzheimer's fundraiser, you guys have made this community incomparable. Sorry. <laughs> so wherever you all end up, I urge you to cultivate communities as great as the one we have here. Because as WWE fighter Nicki Minaj once said, clap for the heavyweight champ, me, but I couldn't do it all alone, we. Now, I'm no wrestler, but I can definitely say that I would not be who I am, where I am today without all of you. And I am so thankful for every moment that we have had together. And I'm even more thankful to be part of the class of 2022. So without further ado, I'm happy to introduce my friend, Irene Bunia, to talk about turning the tassel. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Lily. Nikki would be proud. Um, <laughs> as we prepare to be officially declared graduates of West Lafayette Junior Senior High School, I'd like to talk about the significance of turning the tassel. In most graduation ceremonies, ours included, students wear tassels on the front right side of their caps. After graduating, the tassels are moved to the left side. This action symbolizes our movement from student to graduate. For a lot of us, the past few months have been a blur as we looked forward to this very moment. I know it was for me. Since the beginning of the year, I've always thought, wow, we're seniors. We're graduating in X months, weeks, days, hours, and now minutes. And yeah, I think that was the most math I did in senior year. A wise man named Frank Shi once said, you got to live in the present. I want you to think for a second of a moment this year that you experienced fully, a moment that you really cherish. Maybe it was your senior night or a fun day out with your friends who are being embarrassing as usual. While I hope that all of you made some happy memories, even if you don't remember much of what happened this year, or you don't know what's coming next, it's okay. High school is just one thread of all the amazing experiences you'll have in your life. And after we turn this tassel here, you'll move on to the next great one. Wherever you go after high school, whether it's college, the start of your career, or maybe a well-deserved break, I want all of you to remember that you have it in yourself to create the life that you want. And if you don't know what you want, I believe you'll find it. After all, from getting to know all of you over the last 13 years as friends, classmates, or peers, I've seen your spirit, your tenacity. And I hope that you can see it in yourself too and feel proud to have been a part of the class of 22. Thank you. Now, if all graduates could please stand as we welcome Mr. G uh, Griner, Dr. Greiner um, for the final pronouncement of graduation. Here you are, the moment you've been waiting for. I want to offer my personal congratulations to each each of you, and I join your parents, your family, and your friends in attendance tonight here to celebrate you and your accomplishments in your well-earned and important milestone in your life, in just one of many. In a few minutes, you'll walk off this field and you'll be graduates. I would like to share just three points with you. Always be thankful especially for your family. Your family will be there for you in your high moments, but they'll also be there for you in your most challenging times. Be humble. C.S. Lewis said, true humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. And finally, never stop learning. Strive 
to learn something new every day and be committed to pursuing your passion and your dreams. You'll never know what you might have been if you don't continue to grow. Members of the school board, I've been informed by Principal Schreiner that the candidates before us this evening have fulfilled and attained the statutory educational requirements prescribed by Indiana Code, and they are entitled to be granted their diploma. The class is standing by the powers that the state of Indiana grants the superintendent of schools. I declare each of you graduates of West Lafayette Junior Senior High School. You may turn your tassel from the right to the left. Congratulations. <laughs>